We try to create a very responsible, responsible debate. The kind of debate that Jack Straw has created is really debate amongst racist thugs as to the best way to attack Muslims. You can see over the last week many Muslim organizations have received a barrage of racist email and phone calls. You've seen women, number of women, Muslim women being attacked, like the woman in Liverpool where her, her niqab or her veil was pulled off her with racist remarks shouted at her. But this event is going to create a responsible debate about how is it that we can improve community relations as Muslims and as non-Muslims within this society. On a, a wider sort of scale, I mean, is the, is the religion robust enough to actually debate it? Because certainly there are people who believe that, that many Muslims feel that they are being victimized at the moment, that when uh, politicians such as Jack Straw said, mm. we need to debate these issues, yeah. the automatic reaction is, we're being victimized and, and, and we're being got at. Well, I think there's two points here. The Muslim community has always been open to discussion and debate, and we invite non-Muslims openly to come and ask us why we dress like this, mm. what the Islamic va values are, and so on. But you talk about victimization, definitely the Muslim community has been victimized by this government. Over this last year, you've had comments from John Reed talking about Muslim parents having to spy on their children effectively, comments from Ruth Kelly about Muslim schools breeding extremism comments from the Prime Minister about well, surely it's surely it's quite right if, if there is and it's it is accepted by many Muslims that there is radicalization of, of young people in that community that the community is asked to address that what what is wrong in, in parents being asked to keep an eye out for their, their children basically going off the rails Christian families are asked the same in terms of, of other problems such as drink, drugs or, or mm. antisocial behaviour. Well, I think this is the issue. I mean, the kind of telltale signs that he talked about radicalisation was uh, teenagers dropping out of school, teenagers getting mm. new friends, mm. teenagers staying out late at night. I mean, that's a description of all teenagers. So to, to single out like Muslim parents with regards to that is really it is victimising the Muslim community. And like I say, it's a distraction from the real issues of community division and insecurity in do the UK. Do you have any sort of sympathy at all for what Jack Straw was trying to get across. I mean, we're chatting to you today, we can see your face, you're still wearing your veil, but we can make eye contact, we can see your nose and your mouth, and do you, do you understand a little of what he was trying to say, that perhaps some people do find it difficult to communicate in the same way when so much you know, of the face is covered. Well, I think that's a, a, a by discussion, that's, that's a side discussion really, mm. the issue of communication. I think the main is, emphasis was the fact that it's a barrier and it's a, a cause of division between communities. And I think this is what has caused anger within the Muslim community. At a time when the Muslim community is trying to engage, trying to uh, have strides in order to create, improve community relations with various discussions, invitations to the wider society to discuss Islam. These kind of comments by irresponsible politicians throw water onto these kind of uh, improvements on community relations and really this is what what needs to be understood that it's not a piece of cloth that's causing the divisions but it's rather demonization of the Muslim community demonization of Muslim schools of the Muslim women's dress all of this that creates fear within the general society and suspicion towards Muslim and the, and the dress code. What, what's your your view your, your feeling about uh, this worker at Heathrow Nadia Awida who was sent home for refusing to remove her crucifix um, where, um, as far as we're aware, uh, female Muslim workers at, at BA are allowed to, to carry on wearing the burqa. Uh, Sikhs are allowed to continue wearing their, their uh, turban. Um, it seems to be that there is, some would say, uh, a law for one religious group and a different approach for another religious group. I mean, yeah. is, is there oversensitivity now in terms of employers, politicians, and, and the whole social structure in Britain, that, that religion has become a dirty word. Well, I think this is the kind of discussion and debate that we need to move towards. I think multiculturalism in the past discussed how people of different races yeah. and cultures could work together. And I think now religion. it's religion. Mm. We need to discuss how is it that people of different cult religion, religious beliefs can actually work together. And the way forward is to understand that there are certain common values that all of us hold. For example, um, injustice, the, the kind of government policies, the foreign policy that this government is engaging in, uh, the, uh, the detainment of people without charge people as, as non-muslims and Muslims many of us uh, agree that these are things which are wrong and also there are differences between us and the way forward is to accept these differences and understand that we can and, still and, live and in explain harmony. understand them mm, mm. live in harmony without actually uh, having intolerance towards one another's beliefs Dr. now as we uh, wish you well with your conference today thank and you thanks very, very much. much for coming thank in and uh, talking to us today much. Let's update you now on our top stories this morning with the first result.